Hello and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a good day so far or had a good day depending on what time it is. In this video, I'm going to be showing you three different ways that you can brush holographic powder into your resin molds to make your resin pieces holographic, of course. <laughs> this is going to be an experiment for me and also you depending on like if you ever tried using holographic powder for your resin pieces. or I personally like just the simple way of this one, which is just putting holographic powder into the mold, brush into the mold, and then pouring black resin on top of it. But I know there's a ton of different combinations out there, and it's really just finding what works for you, whether it's an easier way, if it's a more complicated way, whichever you like best. I think you should just do. But some of these other ways can get other results by making maybe the piece more holographic-y. <laughs> That's not a word. But making the holographic shine better due to having like clear resin backing it or being on top of the clear resin than just being with the black resin. So we may see some different results, hopefully. I would think so with these different methods at the end. So as you can see here, I have these little, I guess, tabs or like <laughs> cut out sheets of paper with really bad drawn pictures of the hair clip molds. Um, and this is mainly so I don't get confused towards any step or yeah, any step that we're at, like what I'm supposed to be doing. So I should know where we're at and what each one has in it because I'm gonna be doing a lot of different things, working with different molds and kind of doing the same steps and I need to know what exactly I need to do for them and once they're finished, what I did to them. <laughs> so hopefully this also helps you when you're following along. So like I said before, with these hair clips, so just the standard like rectangle ones, we're just gonna be brushing holographic powder in it and then pouring black resin on top. And then for these in the middle, we're going to be brushing it with holographic powder, then pouring clear resin, letting the clear resin cure, then pouring black resin on top, and of course letting that cure as well. But with these ones here, we're going to first pour clear resin on top, so not brushing hollow powder yet. First pour clear resin on top, let the clear resin get either tacky or you can let it cure depending on what you wanna do. I know some people don't like messing with tacky resin, but some people prefer to brush the hollow powder on it when it's tacky. So whichever one you want to do, I'm not sure which one I'm going to do yet, but we'll see. So after we do that, we're going to be pouring black resin on top and of course waiting it to waiting to see what happens when it cures. The holographic powder that we're going to be using today is this pretty lilac color and it's solar color dust hyper hollow. And we're going to be, as you see, brushing this hollow powder into these two first. So all I really do to brush my hollow powder into a resin mold such as this is I just take a makeup brush, one that you're not using, or just buy any type of like brush that you would use for makeup or something that you can rub into the mold. So we're going to go in and take some of that. My camera is probably going to be weird with focusing in and out, but we're going to take some of that pigment and then we're going to take this mold and what I like to do is just, you're just brushing it all over the mold. You can already see it going in there and you see how it's holographic. And I like to get around the sides too. So if you want the sides of your piece to be, to have that holographic as well, then you can put it on the sides. But if you don't want it to, then you can always just do it right in the center. So again, just taking more of this and I'm just going to do that all around for all three of these here. And be careful when you're doing this, if you have other molds in the way, you can move them out of the way so they don't get any holographic powder or anything on it because this powder can get messy. And usually with these types of powders, you don't have to use a lot. If anything, a little goes a long way. I sometimes like to put as much as I can to make sure that it's purely holographic instead of like you see in some of those edges right there, it's like missing some. So just making sure you go in there and you don't miss any spots. And if you have too much hollow powder and like one of the, I don't know why I want to call it, like one of the cavities here 
or one of the like molds you can take it and put in a different mold if that's if you want that other mold to have that same holographic powder in it as well and there we go we have our first one done at least the first step on this one done there's already some mess going on here if mess bothers you it usually comes with like powder pigments like this especially if you're brushing it into your mold um, you can try to get it up with taking a piece of tape and picking it up. So moving on to our middle one, which also needs hollow powder. I'm just going to do the same thing as I did with these. I usually don't get worried if I get it like on top of this. That's not going to affect the mold at all. Eventually you can clean that up after you demold your piece. I think also you want to make sure you're not being too rough with the mold that can scratch up some of the holographic powder that you're putting in here. So just making sure that you're trying to be as soft as possible, putting it in, get moving all the holographic pigment around and that it's staying in the place that you want it to. And if you miss some spots, like they don't, the powder doesn't want to stick. It's not the end of the world. It's a bit annoying as I can't get this like spot right here to get covered. Sorry, it keeps on focusing. But, like I can't get this spot right here to get covered. Just know you're not the only one. <laughs> go. So we have these two done with their first step of brushing hollow powder in them. And now we are going to move on to the first step of this one, which is pouring clear resin into it. And that will also be the second step of this one. Oops. So I'm just going to mix up 20 milliliters of clear resin. That's going to be way more than enough than I need, especially because these are going to be backed with black resin. So I'm only going to need to pour like a little bit, like enough to just coat the area with it. I don't want to fill up any of them with clear resin. So any supplies you see me working with here today, as always, I'll put it in the description. And if I leave anything out, just let me know. I have my resin all mixed together and I may be sounding differently because we are working with resin. And when we work with resin, you wanna make sure that you're using the proper gear and equipment to do so since resin is toxic for your body, whether it's getting on your skin or breathing it in. So make sure when you're working with resin that you're in a well-ventilated area. I'm right in front of my window with it open and a space that has enough airflow. Make sure that you're wearing gloves, don't want that on your skin. And make sure that you're also wearing a filtered mask. And the epoxy resin that I use is called Amazing Clear Cast and it's by Alumalite. I am an affiliate of their company so you can use my code WISHES10 to get 10% off your total order with them. So if you ever wanted to try Elemolite's products out or you already use them and you want a discount, be sure to use my code which is 10. And I also wanted to say, since we are working with these clear hair clip molds, you don't have to use epoxy resin. Since they're clear, you can also use UV resin because clear molds are able to get the UV light from a lamp or a flashlight is able to penetrate through a clear mold versus like a colored mold. So if you have a clear mold, you can use UV resin as well and that will go by way faster. It's like as little as two minutes to be cured. Whereas epoxy resin takes a whole day or two to fully cure. So what I'm going to do is I have my resin all mixed up. I have some bubbles in there, so I'm going to take my heat gun and be careful working around your uh, molds that have powder in them. You don't want stuff to blow around and get messed up or get like resin in the cavity or part that you don't want it to be. So Once you got some of those bubbles pop, now I'm going to start moving the mold that I'm not using for this step out of the way. Don't want to get any resin in it and move the other one a bit to the side. I first want to focus on this middle one here. And I chose a pretty difficult like mold to try to do two different layers in just because it is pretty thin to have resin in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to just take a little bit of resin and dab it in there. So like that. I would try to spread it around. And since I warmed up the resin with the heat gun by trying to pop the bubbles, 
it's also going to make this more liquidy or thin instead of thick. I'm just trying to push this around to make sure it's not just a bunch in one spot. You know, try not to scratch your mold to like pick up that powder. You want it to stay kind of looking how it already is. And again, I'm going to just take a little bit and just move it around in there. And I'm going to do that for all these cavities here until there's just this clear layer everywhere. And if you think you see after you've done that still bubbles in your mold, I don't really see any, but you could just go over it with a heat gun. And it should be fine since it's already coated with that resin. It shouldn't really move it around. If you feel like you got too much in one spot, you can always just try to scoop it out. And now that we're done with this middle one, it has resin in it. You can barely see a difference, just how clear that resin is. Gonna just move that over to the side. We're gonna do the same thing that we did with this one and just put clear resin in it. And this one may be a bit easier since you don't have to worry about scratching any of that holographic powder off. But do make sure that you're not scratching your mold as well. And once we have both molds filled up with the clear resin like they need to be, these keep flipping over. <laughs> Um, because of the heat gun. And if you have leftover resin like I do, you could just put this in a empty mold that you have or that way none of it goes to waste. So what I need to do now is I'm going to wait for the clear resin to cure. And for this one, since you put in clear resin first, you can either wait for it to cure first or you can wait till it's tacky. Things usually are tacky within two hours not fully cured i see so but what i'm going to do is i'm going to wait for both the clear resins to fully cure and then i'm going to brush powder onto the one with the clear resin but first we got to wait for these to cure at least the ones with the clear resin to cure so if you're working along with me most of the time when i'm waiting for a piece to cure I just take a container and I put it on top. That way no dust or anything falls in. All right, so we are back the next day and it hasn't exactly been 24 hours yet, but it has been enough time that this is solid enough that I can brush the holographic pigment in and I can pour black resin on top without it mixing with the clear resin. So we should be good to go. It takes, remember, for epoxy resin, 24 to 48 hours to cure. So when we do do the black resin, I'm going to be waiting a few days before I demold it, just to make sure it's all cured. I usually try to wait at least 24 hours to demold my pieces for it to be cured. You can demold it early and then let it cure like flat because it may be bendy and everything if you then mix the resin right or if you demolded it too early but you can also let it cure outside the mold. I just recommend it letting cure in the mold. It's just way easier and it keeps its shape better. Let's go ahead for the next step for these is to brush the hollow powder onto this clear resin that we poured and yours should be all smooth, shouldn't be sticky. Um, it's not fully cured, but it's ready to have this pigment brushed in or this hollow powder brushed in. So just like these two, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move these out of the way, especially this one because I don't want the clear part to have any hollow powder on its backside, just on the front where I brushed in it first. So we're just gonna go ahead, taking this, and we're gonna brush it on. And this may be a di bit different just because you're brushing it on to actual resin instead of it being in the mold so it may not want be wanting to stick to the clear resin so from what i'm noticing is it just does not want to stick on here so maybe this is a fail so since this isn't working and again i haven't tried this out so it's all experiment what i'm guessing the problem is is since the resin was poured in there this is 
it does not want to stick to this solid resin there's nothing to like stick to um, it's just moving around on it almost like you could just clean it up it needs to have like that something to stick to such as the silicone of the mold or like being in the resin itself so what I think I'm gonna do instead is it's gonna change this a bit, but I'm thinking of actually pouring or making black resin, and I'm gonna to have to change this step, but putting this pigment or this holographic powder in the black resin and mixing it together and pouring it in that way. So it's changing it from, I guess, how people do this step. So you may have to watch someone else's video or you might have to do it in a different video, but I know some people usually they'll pour the clear resin and they'll wait till it's tacky and then they'll brush it on. I haven't tried that out yet and I did it wrong I guess by waiting for it to cure and become more solid like. It probably needed to be that tacky, more sticky. But I mean we're trying it out and if anything learn from me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the directions on this and we're probably going to start mixing up some black resin to pour into these Okay, molds. so I'm back and I already went ahead and changed the instructions a bit Go through so. this though. Having that clear layer of resin isn't really hurtful. You can always turn into something else. Like I was able to pivot into trying out black resin and holographic powder. So we're still going to learn something and see how three different techniques turn out. Um, just not what I was expecting. I was expecting the first technique. To but yeah, so first I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some resin again, some clear resin. So it's gonna be 20 milliliters of resin in total. So 10 milliliters part A and 10 milliliters part B. I'm gonna mix up clear resin and then I'm going to go ahead and add some black pigment into that clear resin for us to pour that black resin on top of all three of these molds. And for this one, of course, I'm going to save till the end so I can mix that holographic powder into the black resin and then pour it into that. We're back with our resin all mixed up. I have this black dye from Aroma Light that I'm going to be using. I'm first going to try to pop some bubbles with my heat gun. And you may see these start to blow away. I'm probably going to move them out of the way just because I want to make sure they don't get on my black resin. I'm go ahead and add a little dot of this dye. A little goes a long way with this. So that's more than I wanted to do there, but we're going to go ahead and mix with that anyways. And this mix really easily and you can see it's literally that solid black color. And at this time, you can use the heat gun again to pop some of those bubbles. And be sure if you are using a heat gun that you don't use it too much as it can speed up the cure rate of the resin since you're making the resin really hot. So just like before um, with the clear resin, except I guess a little bit different, I'm just going to be pouring the black resin, especially in these two, fill it up all the way. Um, you don't have to worry about trying to leave some room for a second layer or third layer. And every time you fill it up as much as you want, you can take your heat gun or your torch. You can also wait till you get all three in there to do that. It may be easier for you to just pour it in instead of doing what I'm doing. Now that that one's done, we're gonna move on to this middle one. And since this one has a first layer, you have to be careful that you're not pouring too much compared to the first one. Okay, now the middle one's done. We're now going to Take some of this hollow powder. I'll try to get it away from the ones that we just poured that black into. You're just gonna scoop some of it out as much as you want, really. I'm gonna try a little bit at first and see if I need to add more. Put it in there and mix it together and see how it looks and then see if we wanna add more or not. So you can pick it up and see how it's looking so far. It's just not enough hollow coming through. Just go ahead and add more. And if you like it, you can start pouring it. So I don't think this one is going to come out like purple holographic. I think it's gonna be this like really pretty black holographic like clip. And I don't know what the clear resin is going to do on top of that. So it's going to be all like 
experiment and mystery for us to see when we demold it. But as you can see, this is definitely more sparkly on the back than these two. This one is from us brushing it in on the front, so a lot of that powder, holographic powder is starting to come up and mix with the resin. This one, we have a little bit from like on the edges that we brush the powder. And again, with any leftover resin that you have, you can just use it in a mold that you have on your table instead of wasting it. And from what I'm looking, this is actually, you can't see it, I guess, from the camera angle, but this is actually turning out to be like this purple holographic color or just holographic color in general in the black resin. So I'm really excited to see how it turns out. And hopefully I can show it on camera better when I end up demolding it. So we're gonna go ahead and cover this container and we're gonna come back in the next few days once these cure and see how they turn out. All right, so we're back and I'm not gonna lie, it's not the next day, it's not the next two days, it's actually been longer than that. So these should be fully cured um, if I mixed everything right when I was pouring the resin in. And I also want to note that these have been just sitting here literally in this spot and it's usually sunny right here. It's in front of my window. So if I demold these and they're a bit bendy, I want to say I me uh, measured and mixed everything right. So it may just be from the sun being on them. So they may be warm, so they may be bendy, but we'll see when we actually demold them. Ooh, look at that. So this is a simple way. You can see it turned out really nice. You can really see the purple hollow and the hollow in general. I'm sorry that my um, tripod is doing all this, but there we go. So this works out really well, as you can see, this the mold leather ones. Yeah, that's super pretty. I love anything just hollow. <laughs> And next, now we're gonna demold this middle we're one to see how it's different between the first one we just demolded because this one we brushed hollow powder, but then we poured clear resin. Ooh. So you can see right here, um, not enough of that holographic powder got there, so that's why it's black there, but it's still really pretty. Just gonna see if you can see any of the clear between the black resin, but you honestly can't tell that I even poured clear or black resin, or clear resin and then black resin. Sometimes you can tell with resin pieces, but you honestly, about the same outcome. <laughs> if anything, if you wanna save some time, you could just do that step. At least that's what I'm seeing so far with it. Oof, these, now this, if anything, seemed like I had a harder time brushing the holographic pigment into it because you can still see some of that black there. And now this one, I have to say the back of it is looking really pretty. So I'm curious to see how the front is gonna look. And we're gonna see, I guess, how this differs from that. Should be a difference because it'll be more of a black, purple holographic since it's mixed together instead of um, brushed. Yeah. As you can see, <laughs> so this is funny. You can see on the top, you have like that clear resin. And then it's like this shiny, like almost ga black glitter, silver glitter in it. It's not picking up on camera, but off camera, you can see some of the glitter is just showing like it's the holographic and just trying to sparkle. But it's nothing like compared to the black back of it. So this definitely, does not work as well see it so we're gonna go ahead and just mold the other ones so it's a pretty cool look but definitely is not the same as what it's supposed to be like this holographic showing here's the last one yeah so this was the experiment of I guess trying three different ways to use holographic powder whether it's brushing it in or actually putting it in your resin this is how it comes out. There's many different ways that you could do this. You could put the holographic powder in clear resin, mix it together and pour and see how that turns out. You can try to pour, or you could try to brush the holographic powder into a mold and then pour it with the same color that looks like the holographic color. 
I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you're able to learn something from me or just learn a new technique when it comes to holographic powder or maybe you never knew how to use holographic powder or want to learn how to do it so I hope overall just hope this video is helpful if anything a little funny seeing like <laughs> how things turned out and seeing my mistakes I let me know in the comments if you have any questions or you just want to talk about something involving resin holographic powder I don't mind I would love to create a community of us just talking about resin talking about tips and tricks I just think that's just a nice way to help each other as we're growing as artists or growing as businesses, whichever way it might be. Again, I just hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.